Hey guys and gals, Nery here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something you may on Twitter, The Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Beyond the Harbor. The R stands for remake. <laughs> so yeah, apparently this is a remake. I did not know that. So uh, now I know what the R means. Anyway, ooh, excuse me. Let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you are up and let's go. All right. Oh, what makes you say that? I breathe out a sigh, a quiet sigh. Call it a detective's intuition. I watched quietly as the sky darkens, fading from vibrant oranges to soft pinks, followed shortly after by deep blue. The moon rests silently above the horizon, shining a pale glow across the waves. There's a sense of serenity lingering in the air, but like everything else here, it's lined with the inexplicable flavor of dread. Lost in thought, my eyes fixate on the great celestial body looking down on me, like a god looks upon his worshiper. I close my eyes, exhaling slowly. My brain is foggy and able to think straight. The case. I need to focus on the case. There are questions I need to answer. Who were you, Oliver? What happened to you? Where can I find you? Oh, hello there. Opening my eyes again, I'm greeted only by a darkness that shrouds everything around me. An inky blackness that goes on for what seems like eternity. I can feel the terror in my body speaking, pumping adrenaline into me at a rate I only felt once before, but I'm calm. I stand in place, arms out to defend myself from nothing, a neutral frown adorning my face. I want to scream. None of this is real. It can't be real. Is this how it felt for you too? Oh god. As soon as the thought crosses my mind, my eyes shoot down to my feet. They're engulfed by a writhing amalgam of shadow, spindly dark fingers slowly crawling up my... Legs. Fingers become hands, hands become arms, arms become flesh, and flesh decays. They scale my waist with ease, shortly consuming my entire torso in crawling darkness. Look, y'all are doing fancy things with fonts now. I can't take this. This is too scary now. It's too spooky. Ooh. I am forced to watch as my body vanishes into nothing, swallowed by the hungry void beyond my understanding. Everything goes. I could do no more than accept my fate. So, why won't you let me go? Oliver? Oliver Blanche, are you here? <clears throat> no. Wow, that is really close up. Oh shit, okay. Water time. I knew this game was going to be weird. Mm. Mm. Oliver Blanche. End of chapter one. What? Chapter select. Oh, what? Oh my god, really? Is this it? Is this all there is for now? I just started this game! What the fuck? Uh, wait, okay, so I can't start a new game. I can do chapter select, though. Oh. Oh. Okay, there are more. Maybe? Oliver? Oliver Blanche, are you here? The voice rings out across the waves again, but I don't stop my pace. One step, two. Everything that led to this, everything you've come to regret, can you see it now? His face, permanently burned into my psyche, speaks to me. You disgust me. 
I try to look away from my memories of him, but each time they fade from view, they only come back more blinding than ever. You couldn't let go of me, even after I told you what we, what we were. Nothing. He yanks his hand out of mine, violently. Hey! Told you not to touch me! B but you... No. He crosses his arms. I told you exactly what you were allowed to do. No touching unless I tell you to. Okay. The sunset across the horizon reflects on the waves as Don's face becomes cloaked in inky shadow. He sees me staring and scowls. What are you looking at? Is there something on my face? My smile never fades away. Don't you think it's beautiful this time of night? Oliver, Oliver Blanche, are you here? I never left. Hey, you didn't pick up your phone, so I let myself in. Are you still asleep in there? I feel like I am. Nothing feels real anymore. But there's a knock on my bedroom door, followed by an all-too-familiar voice. I hope you're decent, because I'm opening your door. You know. Alright. I could close my eyes again, maybe. I hadn't blinked in ages, though. My eyes were just glass orbs. I was even left to see at this point. I'm jolted from my slumber as an intruder barges into my space. God damn, I had a feeling I'd find you like this. Oh, wow, damn, she swells. Fuck, girl, damn. The imposing polar bear standing in my doorway holds her hands on her hips while she scans over me disapprovingly. You promised me. You promised you'd be ready when I got here at ten. She sighs. Some things never change, do they? I yawn and raise my long arms to the ceiling before I can get a response out. I, uh... She interrupts me by shaking her head. Don't worry about it. Hurry up and meet me downstairs when you're ready, please. She friendly shrugs her shoulders and responds before walking out of my room. I sigh once I hear the shuffling of her feet down the hall. I'm sorry. The morning routine today is the, the same as it always is. I can tell as, I can tell as much as soon as my feet touch the, touch the floor. I already wish I was back in bed. Too late for that, though. I scavenged the floor for a pair of shorts that hadn't been worn too many times. I eventually settled for a black pair that smelled a little off, but nowhere near as bad as the others. I don't think that bathroom is his. That's too clean. Once those were secured on my waist, I shuffle out of the room and into the bathroom, where I believe the night's built up a piss. <laughs> a day where you wake up and there's no blood in it. That's a good day. What the fuck? Dude, go see a doctor! That quote's stuck in my head ever since I first heard it in junior high. I can't remember who said it. Oh, okay. So it's just a, a quote. Okay. I walk over to the sink and inspect myself in the mirror. It's you, you disgusting sack of shit. I grab my toothbrush out of its case and begin the daily process of squeezing this emaciated corpse of a toothpaste tube. It's been wrung out every conceivable out of every conceiv from every conceivable angle by this point. After considerable effort, it manages to gasp out one last remnant of minty freshness. Good enough. I begin to massage my teeth and gums with the semi-hard bristles of my old brush. I received it for Christmas last year from my older sister. Honestly, I was preferable to my usual gift of nothing. Or if I was lucky, some off-brand cologne said her parents had obviously grabbed out of a bargain bin for her to give me. I said I actually use a toothbrush. Once I, once I feel my teeth had been had been successfully deplacked, I had a sink back on. I cut my hands under to get some water, raising them to my lips to rinse. As soon as the water enters my mouth. Sometime today, Oliver! I spit the water out in shock, and luckily most of it ends up in the sink. Showy! The polar bear stands in the doorframe behind me. I can feel the weight of her judgment as she shakes her head slowly and folds her arms. I told you we were friends already I told you our I told you we were already running behind, didn't I? I pulled the toothbrush out of my mouth and spit into the sink before facing her again. Uh yeah, sort of spaced out again. I smile awkwardly, foam from the toothpaste coating my lips and just generally making me look look like a fool. She sighs aloud. I'll be waiting in the car. Hurry it up here, okay? I nod my head, turning my full attention back to the sink. The water runs steadily from the faucet down to the drain in a clear, continuous stream. Water. No, I said I wouldn't get distracted again. I run my toothbrush under the water shortly before turning the faucet off. The toothbrush returned to its proper holster. I flip off I flip off the bathroom light switch and make my way towards the front door. 
While well, on a power walk, I gently pat my hoodie's pocket. Phone's there. Yep, good to go. Near the entrance to my home, I quickly slide my f slide my feet into my sandals. Quite possibly the easiest footwear one could own. The door opens with a little grandeur as I quickly step out and close it behind me. As soon as I do, V glares at me with disappointed eyes from the driver's side of her car. She points back to the door and pinches her thumb while twisting her hand to indicate. Fuck the door. I turn back around, pretend to lock the door, and sprint to the passenger side of V's car. Polar Bear types on her phone as I yank on the handle. Nothing. The door refuses to budge. I yank again and again and again, expecting a different result every time. I break into a panic sweat, pulling my whole being into forcing this car door open. V side-eyes me, pressing the send key on the message she was typing before pressing the lock with the most grateful touch. Interesting. She didn't want him in the vehicle. She probably... Oh, I wonder. Did she just forget to unlock it? Or did she just not want him in the vehicle until she sent that message? Unfortunately, she does this just as I yank on the door in my most forceful attempt yet. I had not properly braced for the force of it opening and force of it opening and smacked the door into my vulnerable stomach and groin. The bear buries her face in her hands as I stumble backwards. Are you quite done? Hmm. The short drive out of the Bay Area is mostly uneventful. You partake in a bit of an idle chatter, but the sound of tires gently rolling over asphalt can consume us most of the trip. Once we enter the city proper, however, my memories of the city spark to life and shine a beacon on the quiet streets. Arborton was hardly a major city, separated from the rest of Virginia on the Delmarva. I don't have a lot of memories from when I was a kid, but from what I can piece together of my time around Baton Rouge, Arborton is different. Perfect place to hide a body, my sister said when we first arrived. Dozing off again? I shake my head. No, just thinking about the city. Arborton? She scoffs. Hardly a city. Haven't you ever been to D.C.? I shrug my shoulders, rolling my head back a bit. Second, y'all. Is indeed water time. Mm. I lied. It's coffee time. The coffee time is over because there's no more coffee left. I don't think I've been out of the city since you took me on that ski trip in 08. The bear briefly looks at me before turning her attention back to the road. Didn't your sister get married last year? Yeah, didn't go. She squints. Hmm. And you said your parents were out this weekend because. And they were taking a trip to the Bahamas with my sister and her husband. Her brow raises briefly, before settling back down to a more natural position. But you're here. I shake my head, folding my hands comfortably into my sweater's pocket. I wasn't interested. Hmm. She reaches toward the center console to adjust the AC, turning it up. She smiles as the air ruffles her fur even more intensely. I just retreat further into my sweater. The passenger side vent blows directly onto me, quickly lowering my body temperature to a much lower level than I'd like. Cold. Cold. I tucked my hands into my pockets, doing my best to contain my contain what little body heat I had remaining. The last thing I'd want to do was embarrass myself. Don, on the other hand, walks well ahead of me. He stops to glance back every so often, and every time our eyes meet, I turn away. The heat my face was emanating could fry an egg. If only that was enough to stop the shivering. The cold September breeze races across the waves, rolling onto the beach and lifting a bit of the sand. That time was just around the corner, and the hateful gaze of the orange and yellow light just above the harbor provided next to no heat. Are you coming? Alright, I'm going to pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout-out to our lovely bronze-tier patrons. Thank you all for all you do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver-tier patron, Cade Silvermoon. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. And thank you to our gold-tier patron, Amr. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to our ultimate tier anyway. If you all want to get your names in the credits, get access to our Not Safe for contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.